Hey everyone, welcome to my new channel called Macus Rides. I'm gonna kick things off with my first ever video with my 2023 Honda CRF 300L that I just picked up straight off the dealer floor. Now of course everyone wants to know how much I paid for it. So brand new out the door, I paid $6,475. That's tax title license, everything loaded up in my truck ready to go. Now looking online and going on Reddit and things like that, I've seen everyone pay from around what I paid to $7,000 or more, um, depending on their location, especially a year or two ago when these things weren't as readily available. Um, and in the used market, I wanted a really clean copy, low mileage, and a lot of folks still wanted around $6,000 for theirs. And some of them had some aftermarket parts, but some of those things I may or may not have wanted on my personal bike. So could I have saved a few hundred bucks by going slightly used? Yeah, probably, but overall, again, getting a brand new bike, one year warranty straight off the dealer room floor. I'm pretty happy with what I paid. I won't go through all the specs on this bike. You can watch several other videos or go on Honda's website, but a couple of things I'm gonna change off the bat before I go for a proper ride is I'm actually gonna change out these flimsy little brush guards for some hand guards, as well as add a proper skid plate down here before uh, I hit the dirt. All right, welcome back guys. Like I said, it's been a couple days. I ordered a couple things that I wanted to add before I went on a proper ride. Um, here you can see the uh, tusk hand guards I put on. That's the Echerbis skid plate. I also ended up adding these Echerbis frame guards. Um, looking online, looks like the frame paint might be pretty thin and wears pretty quick with the boots. So I went ahead and got those as well. I also went ahead and added some sleeker turn signals as well as a tail tidy and i'll do a video on those as well it's a bit of a diy to get the uh get them to fit but i like the way it turned out and i still have the rubber mounted so turned out pretty good all right with that out of the way we'll go ahead and go on our first rides with this thing real quick here's how the uh signals look they actually retain the running lights and then as you use your signals they kind of have this sequential look so all right heading out into our local trailhead here just outside of where i live first time out on the trails i've got 30 miles on this thing mostly i just took it around the neighborhood to and to the store just to start bedding in the brakes and scrubbing the tires a little bit uh, but now it's time for some Nice and easy trail riding. I still consider m myself a beginner on the dirt. Uh, I, I have had a couple of dual sports. I had a KLX 250 and a DRZ 650 that I had before this bike. Um, I didn't spend as much time on those things as I had hoped. Little rocky section going downhill a little bit. I'm just going to stand up. I'm going second. All right. head back up the other way I'm gonna stay in second going up here standing up again I'm not very tall I'm only 5'7 with a 30 inch inseam I'll actually show a couple of shots of what it looks like for me to touch the ground on this obviously um, I'm about 175 pounds without my gear on so you know add several more pounds for the gear but uh, right off the bat uh, standing up on it even not being very tall I think I want to get it, the bars up just a little bit higher uh, they feel just a little bit low uh, I feel like I'm I'm leaning over the bike a little bit too much over the front of the bike rather when I stand up like this um, it's not too bad but a little bit of a rise I think will be pretty good so maybe a CR high bend or if I go with a fat bar I'll go with uh, like a tusk chub bar so comparing this initially to the KLX 250 that I had several years ago 
obviously it's not apples to apples because that was a carbureted 250 cc bike and now they have upgraded it and for this year they haven't upgraded the plastics it's a klx 300 fuel injected uh, the reason i didn't go with that bike is i do i do like that bike and i know that bike has better suspension out of the box at least based on all the reviews and what i remember from my klx it overall was is just still the same old design from decades ago and uh, the Honda just seemed a little more refined overall and from what I remember this Honda is definitely smoother than I remember on that KLX so these are really easy trails it does get a little bit washed out as you can see but at this slow pace yes I know the suspension is too soft and too squishy for any hardcore trail riding or enduro type riding or jumps but for stuff like this which is where I'm going to spend most of my time so far it actually is, is it's really plush and nice even over these little rocky sections I'm in second gear right now and it's just lugging it, it just chugs along it feels really good yeah this is stock gearing as well so I don't think I need to change anything just yet. Yeah, this is fun. Okay, that was a little bit bigger of a dropout. Already I can, you know, kind of feel that soft suspension coming into play. But, again, like I said, nothing crazy for my skill level at this point. I'd like to grow into this bike, grow my skill level and possibly upgrade the suspension from there all right putting those bark busters to work already so yeah so far i've just been lugging along in second gear even right now i'm in second gear just chugging along and this thing just it's perfect maybe i would go down one tooth in the front so i could really chug it but this is great all right, I'm just gonna take a little break. All right, back out on the road this time. We'll go ahead and do a few road miles. Talk about my initial thoughts. Now on the road, obviously uh, with the, this being a dual sport and the way Honda geared it, uh, the first several gears are, are pretty short, so coming off the line you have to shift a lot uh, it isn't a bad thing makes it pretty engaging and fun to ride uh, but it is something you notice even with stop gearing stop tires uh, pulling away from the stop you've got to shift several times to get up to speed uh, right now I'm in sixth gear going about 50 55 let's see 54 miles per hour 55 and sixth gear I'm about 5500 rpm and this is basically about 95% of the roads uh, that I'll be riding uh, to get to different trails on this bike. Um, I won't be doing a lot of highway or freeway. Uh, I will throw in a clip of me taking a little bit of freeway. I just rode it through an exit just to uh, see what it felt like. And um, I went a little over 70 miles per hour. And at that speed, uh, the motor was revving pretty high. It didn't have a lot of headroom. I'm still in the braking period, so I didn't want to pin the throttle all the way and see what it can do, but I did want to get up to speed at least around 70 to 75 miles per hour, seeing as how that's the, the speed limit on my local freeway is 75 miles per hour. And based off that short ride, I would say um, if you have to do any extended freeway driving at 70 miles per hour or more, uh, I wouldn't recommend this bike if you had to do, if you had to spend a lot of time doing those speeds. It, it's just not that comfortable. You have to wind the engine out. I, I wouldn't be worried about the reliability of the motor because folks have done thousands of miles on the freeway on these things. But for me, uh, that's just not why I bought the, this bike. Um, if I wanted to do a bunch of road miles at those speeds, I would maybe buy something with a little bit bigger motor than you take away from having a nice lightweight bike like this. Uh, but 
back on the road again going up to 50 to 60 miles per hour where I'll spend most of my time uh, it's very comfortable uh, the riding position is comfortable the engine isn't too vibey the mirrors don't buzz around too much uh, it's still a single it's still a small displacement thumper so you know you feel that a little bit but I think Honda's done a good job at balancing this motor uh, seeing as how it comes off of the derivative of their road CB300 motors so or CBR300 I forget what they call it but yeah so for just general road riding around town this thing is really comfortable the power uh, especially with the gearing uh, it's more than enough just for getting around town it's actually quite peppy down low it's got a little more punch than I was expecting I kind of already trained myself in my head to, to think that this thing was just going to be a dog but it, it's not bad it, it's really quite adequate around town it, uh, the brakes on this thing just a single rotor up front dual piston single rotor out back single piston um, they're adequate nothing to write home about uh, no real complaints about it um, uh, obviously if you grab a handful of brakes you get a little bit of nose dive well what with the soft suspension and the um, travel overall available on the bike so but even then it's predictable uh, it's what you would expect it matches the character of the bike and I think as I break it in it'll probably even uh, bed in the brakes just a little better so I might even get a little more bite on the brakes as, as time goes on but we'll see but yeah no road manners overall are are, are good um, I'm actually surprised at how comfortable it is at you know the speeds that I have to go to get to where I need to be I can cruise along in six gear so even even around 4,500 to 5 or 4,500 to 5,000 rpms in six gear I can pull the throttle in a little bit and the bike still pulls a bit you know it's not a rocket ship it's not a torque monster it doesn't push you back into the sea but it works again it just matches the overall theme of this bike and what this bike is and what it's meant to do so uh, now I will say even though this bike is pretty light uh, with with this stock setup it it was pretty stable even at the 70 miles per hour or more it uh, I had gotten used to kind of a, a wobbly feeling with the dual sports but a big reason for that was my my past dual sports had knobbier front tires uh, which probably led to that instability but you know I will give it to Honda they coming out the box it's it's a really stable bike even at highway speeds went ahead and gave the brakes a bit of a squeeze there and yeah it's it does what it needs to do at a stoplight you can see mirrors vibrate just a little bit but, but I'm not actually feeling that in the seat or in the handlebars too much that's mostly just you know the mirrors aren't that great but so just pulling away coming up to speed as you can see shifting up to fifth gear pretty quickly Good road manners overall. Uh, the suspension on all the little road imperfections is very comfortable. Pretty plush. Uh, definitely better than some of the bikes I've had in the past. Uh, I had an S07, uh, even my Honda Grom that I had for a while. I mean, when you would hit certain cracks in the road with, with those bikes, like you could feel it, and it wasn't very pleasant. Uh, this isn't giving me any of that. Um, so that soft suspension actually becomes a bit of a of an advantage on certain certain tarmacs and certain riding conditions. But it's not jostling me around or making me feel uncomfortable. Or more importantly, it doesn't make me feel unsafe. But the real reason I bought this bike is because I could pull off at random places like this. So I'm just driving along the road and see a bit of dirt pull off all right I'm just gonna pull up this hill real quick 
a quick break and we can close out before I give my initial thoughts on the bike after my first couple of rides. Looks a little better with some dirt on it, don't it? All right, everyone, I'll wrap up with some of the good things and the bad things that I found on this bike after my first couple of rides. On the pros, it's got a smooth motor, a comfy riding position, good road manners, it feels light and nimble. The suspension is plush on the road and when you're taking it easy off the road. Now for the bad parts, the freeway speeds just aren't great for me. The standing position is not ideal with the stock handlebars and the suspension is going to be too soft for when you pick up the pace off-road. That's it for now. Please like and subscribe. I'll provide updates as I put more miles on this bike. See you on the next one.